vertical labs. Uh, it's I'm, I'm pumped to be here. Uh, last DevCon, so DevCon four, Mike and I uh, were just roaming around. Uh, we didn't actually have an official talk, but it was it was super funny because everybody was talking about the entity. It was around the same time that Eve two was evaluating the B2B to adopt it and so on. So it was a lot of buzz and. We ended up realizing that you know people actually want to learn about the B2B. People want to you know up their their skills and understand what this thing is all about. So we ended up organizing kind of like a subversive workshop uh, on the last day, uh, very very impromptu, uh, communicated over Telegram, and very self organized. We had a turnout of like I don't know forty to fifty people in a tiny room, and we had to we had to like move all the furniture out to and sit on the ground. So it felt like you know the start of something very special in this marriage between Ethereum and and, and the B two B. And um, I'm glad that we actually have official sessions this time. Uh, so so it's great. We have uh, this is one of two sessions uh, that we are running here at DevCon. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is what's, what has been up in the Liberty Team project over the last few months and what's coming next. A lot of super exciting stuff coming up next. So um, I have a lot of ground to cover. I'm going to go super, super quickly. I don't even know if I'm going to get be done with this uh, in time. But if I don't, come feel uh, come come talk to me. Come find me. I'm going to be I'm going to be around. The second talk that we're going to be having at DevCon is about Gossip Sub. Um, so a lot of people, Gossip Sub is, is an important protocol that is being adopted at the uh, at the Eve two project, and a lot of people have shown interest. So we decided to do kind of like a deep dive in Gossip Sub. Uh, about Gossip Sub that's happening on Wednesday, uh, Room B ten, um, and you've got the details in the slides. So I'm just gonna. So it's going to get started now. So I see a lot of uh, familiar faces here. So who's actually a user, by show of hands, who's actually a user of lib 2 b right now? Okay, that's pretty cool. That's good. Who contributes to lib 2 b Nice. Okay, we've got uh, a team over there that's contributing actively to Rust lib 2 b That's awesome. Cool. So let's get started. Uh, as I said, we have a lot of ground to cover, very little time. Um, and what I want to go through uh, today, so who's actually what, who's actually pretty familiar with the B2B? Would you say, like, who's a five in the B2B, more or less? Okay, five and above. Cool, awesome. So I think the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the one-on-one -on -one is going to be, is going to be important to go through uh, today. Then I'm going to, I'm going to talk about what we've shipped in the last few months and what we're actually building and what's going to be shipping over the next few months. So, so yeah, cool. So let's uh, do. Um, little intro to lib 2 b So lib 2 b is a modular peer-to-peer -peer networking stack. It is, I like to call it the layer zero of decentralized platforms because it basically is, so if, if you realize everything that we're building here, everything that's getting built in this conference by teams that are attending this conference and so on, rests on top of unstoppable networks. If we don't have peer, good peer-to-peer, -peer, rock-solid networking foundations, we have nothing, right? Because the very nature of everything that we're building is decentralized. And decentralized means that different nodes around the world, without knowing each other, collaborate across a set of protocols and across a set of processes. So um, Libby2B is a modular peer-to-peer -peer networking stack, uh, which is essentially a composable, it's, it's, it's a composable set of building blocks to assemble a future-proof peer-to-peer networking layers. It runs on many runtimes, uh, server, browser, there have been experiments in mobile environments as well, and soon there's a team that's working on making Libby to be run nicely on embedded devices. Um, it originated in the IBFS project and is right now implemented across seven different languages at different, le at different levels of maturity. There's a bustling cross uh, cross project community. Initially, it was created by uh, by PL at Protocol Labs and is stewarded by Protocol Labs, but by no means does Protocol Labs own the community or the B2B. At this point in time, at this day and age, it has, it has become a public good, right? And it's being adopted all across the, the ecosystem. Uh, it is licensed, currently licensed officially under the MIT stack, but soon we're going to be transitioning uh, under the MIT license. Soon we're going to be transitioning this to the permissive license stack, which gives you even more guarantees in terms of uh, us being uh, not claiming to hold any rights on top of the, uh, over the B2B. So um, what does, so let me to be really hinges on this concept of decentralized process addressing. What is decentralized process addressing? The grand vision of the B2B is to, is, is to provide the ability to locate, connect, authenticate, negotiate, and interact efficiently with processes around the world, no matter where they are, no matter what transport they're using, no matter what runtimes they're using, as long as the, uh, 
their identity is cryptographically derived from, sorry, their identity is cryptographically de derived from their public key. And Libby2P really strives to make this happen in a seamless manner by taking care of uh, NAT traversal, relay, packet switching, and a few other things that are important to make sure that different processes that are running anywhere in the world can find other processes uh, in, this global in this global fabric that is the internet and interact with each other. Even as those processes relocate, roam, evolve, mutate over time. Right? So it's, this is, uh, the concept of process addressing is completely juxtaposed to endpoint addressing, which relies on having a, on targeting a process by where they are in the world, by an IP address. Right? So the P2P, as I said, is a, is, a, is a stack of composable building blocks, and these building blocks have transports, multiplexes, secure channel, peer discovery, pop up, traversal, and several other things that are not even mentioned here. Um, so think of the P2P as a toolbox to assemble the networking layer uh, of a decentralized platform from composable pieces, kind of like a Lego puzzle. Right? These elements plug into each other by abstractions, and each of these elements can have multiple backing implementations. So for example, uh, we have multiple transports, TCP, Quick, uh, there is a Bluetooth transport that's up and coming, uh, we're, we're working on UDP, so there's a, there's a number of backing implementations to each of these pieces. So that's kind of like what I have. I have very little time, so this is what I have for an intro. And now we're going to talk about what we shipped uh, in, the last, in the last few months. And this is super exciting. So we have, so Libby2P has seven native implementations, which are not shipped, the shipping continuously, right? Nothing is ever done in this world, right? But what's cool about this is that each community, each implementation really is backed and supported by a different provider, a different community, a different team in the ecosystem. And these teams are actually working. Hey, we've got some here, so we've got Okay, raise your hands. Uh, Status over there is implementing Nimbly to be. We've got uh, the Sigma Prime team over there that's implementing Rust and B2B, that's working with uh, the Web Foundation to, to implement Rust and B2B. Do we have others? I think we have the Java team around. Well, we've got Go and JS over there. This is pretty cool. Um, so, what's cool about this is that all of these implementations actually follow the Libby to be specifications. So, they're interoperable with, uh, with one another. They are at different levels of maturity. So the three most mature ones that we consider are JS, Go, and Rust, and Pilot B2B, JVM, and NIMP are mostly driven by the Ethereum 2 project, and CPB, the B2B, is driven by the Polkadot project. So this is pretty cool. And what's great about this is that each implementation, in a way, also targets specialized environments, right? So in the case of NIMP and B2B, they are making a strong effort to target embedded and constrained devices. Right? In the case of JVM the B2B, right now in the current version, uh, it, is just, it is a Java implementation, but in the next version, it will be very geared towards Android as well. Right? So this is, uh, this is, you know, this is brief. I'm very happy about this. All right, so in terms of uh, adoption, the adoption of the B2B over the last few months is so it's skyrocketed and it's been kind of like a network, network effect. It's been amazing. So what's cool about, so here you've got like a few of the adopters, some uh, that, are, that are worth uh, mentioning, of course, Polkadot, Ethereum, 5.9 BFS, the, the kind of like the, the top ones over there, and then there is uh, Xerox that's doing a lot of awesome stuff, OpenBazaar that have created a million transport for the B2B, and that's what's cool about all this traction and having a, basically having a bunch of communities uh, that when you look at how they would have built their networking layers from scratch, they would, have, they would have looked a lot alike one another, right? Because that's, like, they all share the same concerns, right? So uh, connectivity, addressing, peer discovery, NAT traversal, these are things that are common across the, across the ecosystem, right? So there's no point reinventing the wheel <laughs> at each of these projects. And what's cool is that all well, these projects are now collaborating with the Libby to the open community to, um, to pull their brains and, and the hands to build a rock solid uh, networking foundation. And uh, what's great is that most of these projects are actually contributing actively to so not just using the technology, but actually contributing. A few weeks ago, we also saw the seven-way interop liftoff of the ETH 2.0 uh, project. Uh, so a bunch of teams actually locked themselves up in a few cabins in Canada and uh, came up with set a, a, a network of uh, a limited to be based network of all seven of seven clients built in different languages interacting with one another and this is impressive this is a tweet that was super popular by Johnny Ray who I don't know if is in this room right now yeah not right now 
Cool. So a few weeks ago, we also launched DevGrants, and uh, we made so DevGrants is a the place where we're going to be publishing, and you're going to where we're going to be publishing work that we be, we would like to get done, but it's also a collaborative space for different projects across the ecosystem to publish uh, items that they would like to uh, ship in the B2B. Uh, and co-fund those items and pool funds together to make sure that those happen. And at one point, we, we're speaking as well with a few teams that are uh, going to help us fund much of this work via, uh, via Dallas and, um, and a few other things. We also uh, awarded um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of bounties at EU Berlin, and that was hugely huge, hugely successful. Uh, we've also shipped talks and specs. This has been a long-standing issue for the VCP project. Thanks to everybody who stuck by us during the dark times while we didn't have good conceptual docs. We now have an amazing uh, docs.b2b.io <laughs> website. Uh, we're engaged in a full specs rewrite to make sure that, they, that the specs actually match and they're accurate with the implementations. Uh, we've created a specs maturity cycle. We're defining an RFC process, so we're maturing a lot in terms of um, you know the things that are just not cool, <laughs> right? So there's more things in a project that, is, that are not just good. <laughs> cool. uh, we've launched uh, the discussion forums as well, so you've got discuss.lb2b.io. So uh, if you have any usage questions, if you want to start a discussion about things that are not necessarily bugs or change requests and so on in code, this is the place to go, not really GitHub. And we've shipped a bunch of features as well, right? So this is just a list of the ones that came to mind. We've got AutoNet, Auto Relay. Uh, we created a Auto Relay experiment. So we launched an Auto Relay experiment at IBFS, gathered uh, a bunch of learnings from that. Uh, TLS 1.3 spec and the implementation in Golden B2B, Quick Transport with Draft 23 support, WebRTC Direct Transport, which was actually promoted and created by the folks at, at Zero X. Uh, I think they're here. Uh, a browser-based walls and deployment, so browser-based walls and deployment, so Rust b 2 b and Golden B2B as well, uh, with a lot of support from the Zero X guys who are seeing in the room as well. Um, we've got gossip support uh, that was created by, by the guys at Sigma Prime in Rust, uh, so taking the reference implementation from Golden B2B and porting it over to Rust, uh, as well as the guys from Chainsafe who did the work for JS for JS b 2 b and they are the back. <laughs> amazing. Uh, we also shipped the B2B daemon. Uh, we have refactored the interfaces in Golden B2B and adopted GoMod. Um, there is a up and coming Bluetooth transport that has been created by a team, um, a French team that's called Verti, who are building a decentralized peer to peer uh, offline first uh, message application. And they've got that running on Golden B2B, uh, shipped in, in iOS. And of course, we've um, done like it, we've uh, implemented any stability and performance fixes across the board. So that is uh, what we've shipped so far in the last few months. The things that actually came to mind, there have been a lot more things that didn't come to mind. So uh, sorry if I didn't mention some that you think are, are relevant. And now I'm going to talk about what we're working on and what's on the roadmap for the, few for the next few months. So number one, I would say number one priority not just for us, but for a lot of projects and a lot of teams across the board, is testing at scale. And this has been a re recurring topic. Uh, whenever I speak to a team, uh, we they they like pretty confused, so they don't like they always ask about, hey, how how are you testing IPFS? How are you testing the B2B at scale? And what are the what are the techniques and so on? So we're actually this has become a bottleneck for us. Uh, we want to make sure that every single release of the B2B and IPFS and other projects that we put out there uh, is well, uh, so the, the, the improvements or the deterioration of each release and each commit is well quantified. And for that, we need a platform, uh, which we're calling the Interplanetary Test Ground, uh, to be able to um, create distributed and reproducible tests that hit magnitudes of 100,000 nodes, right, uh, with simulated network conditions. So uh, this is going to be a platform that is currently in development. Uh, we have architected this platform. Uh, it is, we're racing towards it. Um, and what we want to make sure is that it's tightly integrated with the engineering lifecycle. So basically, is this no use in having a platform where you have to where you have to do things manually every single time, right? So we want for every single commit of 
Libya to be an IPFS to be subjected to a battery of tests of different kinds, right? So comparative testing. How does this how does this commit um, compared to a previous commit or to a previous branch? How does how does this PR deteriorate or improve the status quo in terms of how my node behaves, what are my runtime characteristics, and also in terms of emergent uh, network behavior as a result of deploying that PR in a network of 10,000 nodes, 100,000 nodes, right? We want to be able to do things like uh, chaos testing, interoperability testing, so being able to take, for example, um, a particular proportion of nodes that are running IPFS or lib 2 version whatever, 50% that are running this version, 20% that are running this version, and 10% that are running another version, and understand how that combination actually plays out in terms of uh, in terms of performance. This is what the, um, what the architecture is looking like. Uh, if you want to follow this effort, if you want to track what we're doing, make sure that you watch this repo, IBFS test round. It is right now in the, under the IBFS umbrella, but it's probably going to be moved uh, to the libby 2 b umbrella at one point because it's, it's a bit, it's way lower in the stack than IBFS or even a separate top level project. Another thing that I'm super excited about <laughs> that we're working actively on is instrumentation. So, a lot of teams have asked us for better observability and essentially the capability to X-ray into what the ability to be stuck is precisely doing in real time. So we're currently laying uh, the groundwork by taking a data-first approach. Right. So. Yeah, it would be awesome to create ad hoc visualizations about things that are happening in libby 2 b but really the scalable way to build this is to uh, tap into the inner guts of libby 2 b and expose a fire hose of instrumentation data via a standard protocol such that any implementation of libby 2 b by adopting that standard protocol will render itself to being visualized and being inspected by a uh, common framework, right? So the next step, so we're focusing on building that fire hose um, by an introspection protocol that we're drafting. Uh, and the next step is to create a binding framework that consumes that data in a browser, creates a, uh, essentially a reactive state repository on the browser uh, that React uh, D3 different driven visualizations can subscribe to and visualize data, whether it's a recording of a slice of time uh, and like you're where we, we want to give people the ability to move backwards and forwards uh, through time so that you can, if you want to debug a particular situation, you can start up a recording, take a dump, and then load it into the browser and visualize and move through time, as well as watching the activity of a node in real time. So, so yeah, we plan to release a browser library for developers to, to compose reusable visualizations, and we definitely hope that this will kickstart a catalog of reusable visualizations across the board that are compatible with all the B2B uh, implementations. And by the way, this project is codenamed Phantom Drift. So if you see if you see those terms, now you know what uh, what it's about. So then, so a few of the things that we're here, that we're going to be working on that we're actually working on are message orientation. So um, this has been uh, a, a long-standing missing feature in the B2B. Uh, so this, so we're intending for libby 2 b to become an entry point. Um, so for libby 2 bs entry point to become a factory of stacks from which you'll be able to create different kinds of hosts. We're working on NAT hole punching and direct connection upgrade. So we already have UPMP and NAT PMP port support, uh, port opening support. But um, and we have the auto relay and auto NAT subsystems that are capable of sensing if you're running behind a NAT and automatically starting up a connection with a relay and advertising those addresses uh, to the rest of the world so that you can receive inbound connections. But that is super inefficient. And um, what we need to do is move to a place where we use that relay connection as an embryonic connection to do signaling between the between the two between various peers to start to initiate a hole punching procedure and hopefully be able to hole punch right. Um, we're going to be working on robust pervasive uh, quick support as well with TLS 1.3 and this is important because this combination of protocols is what's used in HTTP uh, 3 as well uh, and if we make libby 2 be run on port 443 this means that uh, we basically have a high chance of being a lot more sensitive resistant, uh, resistant than we are right there's uh, a few other things that we're working on, negotiation, protocol negotiation, I won't go too deep into this, I have very little time. Uh, so multi-static 2.0, if you hear this, uh, there's a bunch of features, uh, 
that are, that are necessary for EVE 2.0 as well, so they're super high priority for us. We are creating new secure channels, DLS 1.3 and noise handshakes. Noise handshakes is going to be using noise pipelines, um, which uses a combination of optimistic scenarios with a graceful fallbacks uh, when the key is not, uh, when the key has rotated on the other end. Uh, we're going to be working on TLS 1.3 in all languages. We currently have support for Go, and there are some roadblocks in JS and Rust, so we're going to be uh, switching through those. And more evolu and basically, yeah, so a few more things here to mention, language-specific improvements and maturity, pops up evolution, so make sure that you come to the Gossip Succession on Wednesday, uh, which is at uh, 255 in room B10. Um, because we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about some of the things that are coming uh, down the pike uh, in terms of where this is heading. Um, we're gonna be talking about something called that this time, uh, which is the future generation of gossip stuff. More evolution, so hardening the DHT, which is a critical thing right now for us, um, and this is dependent on the test round. Uh, we are aiming to. Uh, to get even better specs, so we're aiming for 100% accurately specced, and there's a contributor, and there's um, there's a there's a peer that's working actively on this. Other topics: CTK, CTK onion routing, reputation management. These are things that are ideas that we are you know, <laughs> developing in our heads, and we hope to flesh out over the next few months. Also wanted to showcase what I, what I talked about earlier, uh, the Bluetooth transport in GoLibby2P, which was uh, developed by our friends at Bertie. Uh, unfortunately, it is still closed source, so we can't demo it, or we can't, um, uh, you, you, uh, there's no access, public access to the code, but that will change uh, hopefully shortly. And that's pretty much all I have for today. Uh, so that was super rushed, <laughs> a lot of content to share. Uh, and if you have any questions, make sure to uh, to hit me or to, to pin me around. I'm going to be roaming around. Make sure that you come to the next session uh, that we have about Gossip Sub, which is tomorrow um, at 2.55 in room B10. And make sure, if you're excited about the B2B, like we are, and a lot of people in this room are, make sure to get involved, either by shaping the future, contributing to the specs, uh, by hacking on meaty, th on meaty things, um, Looking at the dev brands and and uh, and uh, taking on some of that work, and if you just want to contribute, you know, on particular things, then make sure to watch the project rebels. So those are the contact details. If you don't find me around and you want to talk to B two B, make sure to pick me on those networks.